This is my box, and my box has low entropy. Why? Well, if I open the box, we'll find eight coins, and all of these coins are heads up. You can tell they're heads up because I've put a little pink dot on all of the head sides. There's nothing on the tail side, so we can distinguish between heads up and tails up. And because all eight of these coins are heads up, that means that the box is in the lowest possible entropy state. But what if I give the box a shake? Ah, some of the coins have flipped from heads to tails. There's now four heads and four tails. So the box has increased its entropy. And actually, it's increased its entropy to the maximal entropy state. That means that the box now has the most possible entropy it can have. Let's give it one more shake. Now we have three heads and five tails. That means that the box has reduced its entropy. Well, we're also used to hearing that entropy increases, but it is possible for entropy to decrease. It's just on average that entropy is going to increase. Okay, in order to explain what the hell I'm talking about, I'm gonna need a pen and paper. Suppose my box only had two coins in it. What we call the state of the box is simply a count of the number of heads up coins and the number of tails up coins. So in this case, we're in the state two heads up. And there's only one way of producing this state. The first coin needs to be heads up and the second coin needs to be heads up. Let's give these columns their proper titles. So we have here the state of the box and here the number of ways of producing that state. There's another state, that's the state one heads up and one tails up. How many ways are there of producing this state? Well, there are actually two ways. I can have this first coin tails up and the second coin heads up, or I can have the first coin heads up and the second coin tails up. There are two ways of producing this state. And there's a final third state, two tails up. And just like in the case of two heads up, there's only one way of producing this state. The first coin needs to be tails up and the second coin needs to be tails up. Now, suppose my friend took these two coins, put them in a box, closed the box and shook it, and then asked me to guess which state the box was in. Well, I would guess it was in the state one heads, one tails. That's because it's more likely to be in that state than any of the other states. In fact, it's twice as likely to be in the state one heads, one tails than it is to be in the state two heads or two tails. What about when I had eight coins in my box? Well, our original state, the state that the box started in was eight heads. And the number of ways of producing that state is just one again. Every coin needs to be heads up. The next state down the list is gonna be seven heads and one tail. How many ways are there of producing this state? Well, I can see one immediately. If I turn over the first coin, then I'm gonna have one tails and seven heads. But I could turn over any of these coins. I could turn over this coin and I would have one tails and seven heads, or I could turn over this coin, and I'd have one tails and seven heads. So clearly I could turn over any one of the eight coins that we have in front of me, and that must mean there are eight ways of producing this state. The next state would be six heads and two tails, then five heads and three tails, and then four heads and four tails, which is the one I'm kind of interested in. And there's so many different ways of producing this state. I could do this way, for example. And clearly it's gonna be a very difficult thing to try and go through every possible arrangement, but luckily there's a formula that tells you how many ways of arranging this state there are. And I looked up the answer earlier, and it is 70. There are 70 different ways of producing the state four heads and four tails. That means if we're given a box with eight coins in it and we don't know what state it's in, it's 70 times more likely to be in the state four heads and four tails than it is to be in the state eight heads. And this is all entropy is a measure of. Entropy is just a measure of the number of different ways of producing a given state. So the state of four heads, four tails has high entropy because it has a large number of ways of producing that state. Whereas the state eight heads has low entropy because there's only one way of producing that state. That's why I said that eight heads up was the state of lowest entropy, and the state of four heads and four tails was the state of highest entropy. 
If I put these coins back in the box and give the box a shake, what I'm doing is I'm supplying these coins with enough energy to change their state. They're able to flip from heads to tails. And this new state they're in is likely to be a state of high entropy, simply because there are more ways that the coins can arrange themselves into a state of high entropy than into a state of low entropy. For example, there's only one way the coins can arrange themselves into the state eight heads up, which is incredibly unlikely after shaking them. So these coins are likely to be in a state of high entropy. And the same kind of stuff is happening in the world around us all the time. This box is full of air molecules, and because of the temperature in the room, these molecules are moving about, and they're hitting into each other, and they're hitting into the walls of the box, and this motion constitutes a kind of shaking. And because of this shaking, they're able to explore the various states available to them. And when we look at them, they're likely to be in a state of high entropy, for exactly the same reason that the coins were, because there are simply more ways they can arrange themselves into a state of high entropy than into a state of low entropy. If, like I did with the coins, we change our system and somehow put it into a state of low entropy, and then we let it evolve through this process of shaking, then it's likely to move into states of higher entropy. And this is just what the second law of thermodynamics says. It says that entropy increases. But what fascinates me about the second law of thermodynamics is that it's not a physical law. It doesn't explain why like charges repel, or what holds protons and neutrons together in the nucleus of an atom. It's a mathematical law, but it's a mathematical law that has just as profound consequences for the physical world as the physical laws do. And I'm thinking of one consequence in particular, and that's that the physical laws are all time reversible. If you look at an interaction governed by the physical laws, you can't tell whether it's being played forwards or backwards. For example, if I showed you a video of two billiard balls colliding, you couldn't tell me whether the video was being played forwards or in reverse. And the same is true of the coins in the box. Because the motion of the coins is governed by the physical laws, you can't tell whether the video is being played forwards or backwards. But you can see that the state of the coins has moved from a state of high entropy into a state of low entropy, and that's incredibly unlikely. And so you can determine that the video was played in reverse. And so entropy is what allows you to make this determination. It allows you to determine whether time is flowing forwards or backwards. And this isn't so trivial as it may sound, because entropy is the only thing we know that gives a direction to time. The reason why we know time is flowing forwards is because when we look at the entropy of something, we notice that on average it is moving from a state of low entropy to a state of high entropy. If you found the video entertaining or informative, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. And finally, a huge thank you to Steve from Black Pen Red Pen who featured my video on his channel. I've seen that he's promoted a few other small YouTubers and he doesn't ask for anything in return. So if you're watching this video and you don't know who he is, then please check out his channel and subscribe.